Okay, I'm going to get started. Um, not sure if there's anyone really watching yet. What I'm going to work on today is a conversion of a brand new Pico 8 game. Uh, that was made for the Global Game Jam. So I've got my... Um, I haven't actually played the game yet, but um, so hopefully it's not going to be too hard to convert it. Uh, I guess I'll find out. Okay. Um, got it. So this is the folder where um, uh, pick away cartridges are stored. Uh, I've got this brand new one called Duality or Duality. So I've put that in my carts folder. Um, I can't actually remember how to, it's been a while since I've done anything with Pico 8, I do, uh, just have to quickly look up how to actually load this cartridge. Okay, so it should be just as simple as load duality.p8. Oh, okay. Well, that's embarrassing, I need to, um... Uh, I need to update my copy of um, of Pick a Wait, so I'll do that. Um, I should have given the game a test before the stream, but oh well. my download all right um <clears throat> okay here we go so I um, bought it in a bundle so um couldn't use the regular download links just use the um, window setup so why not Oh, that's weird. It doesn't want to install it. Uh, that should be okay because I can just um, uh, just for now I can just get the download version rather than the um, the installer version. Uh, hopefully that won't be a problem. So I'll just grab that one there. Right, let's um, let's give that a try. So if I type folder, that yep, that opens the um, folder where my cartridges. So let's try to load my um, cartridge. Hopefully, it's going to run this time. Okay, it's loaded it. Uh, do I need to type? Run or something like that. Just 
turn that down, it's quite loud. Okay, so... Yeah, it's, um... It's running. I, um, so it is two-player only. I don't remember the default pick uh keyboard mapping, so I'll look, look that up. Okay, well, I might need to experiment a bit. Um, oh! Okay, this is cool. Um, Alright, so the game is... It's basically... Um, uh, it's, it's a dueling game, so I should be able to shoot the other... Yep, okay, then it fades out. Um, okay, so there are lots of cool little effects. Um, okay, so th there's this parry button. Um, I assume that's some kind of deflect. Okay, so I wonder if I can deflect my shot. So, uh, what was my, my shoot key? Okay, so this might be a bit awkward, but let's let's try it. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, so um, Yeah, okay, so it's a fairly simple game. Um, so if you time your block just right, it will um, uh, it will kill the other player. I really like that. Oh. I hadn't noticed the, um, uh, something else I hadn't noticed is the background, so I think, um, uh, it basically shows, so it's becoming more and more of the Wild West scene because the Cowboy's been winning. What's the shoot button for this guy? That one. Okay. So... If I shoot him now... Should, I'm guessing it's going to move back slightly the other way? Okay, yep. Well, I'll just uh, quickly finish the game. Might need to give this a test later on on the 
Amiga Live um, multiplayer service. Okay, so fairly simple game. Uh, hopefully, it won't be too hard to convert. I'll just um, uh, I'll just do one or two more uh, tests just to uh, make sure I've got um, I've got it right. So I think if I push this button, yep, the robot does the block. So if I get the cowboy, if I fire and then I get the cowboy to do block, yep, it does the. Does that animation? Uh, those birds are a neat little effect. Uh, might be quite cool if I can convert uh, put those in the conversion as well. Anyway, I think I've um, I've played it for long enough. Um, let's um, uh, let's see if I can convert it. It has been a long time since I've actually used the Pico 8 and Porter on Scorpion engines, so hopefully it's just gonna it's just gonna work. Um, it doesn't convert absolutely everything. It doesn't really do anything with sound effects or the code, but it does import the level and the uh, the graphics. Let's go to my carts folder. Oh, uh, no, I did that the wrong way. Yep, okay. Um, open duality. Let's make a new Duality, I don't know how it's pronounced. Save that. Okay, success, imported pick away cartridge. Um, so, yeah, it's configured um, It's configured with the pick away palette by default. It's got two copies of it so that we can use it for regular bobs as well as sprites. Uh, let's have a look at the map. Map is going to work. Oh yeah, so that's um, uh, that's basically what we saw in the game. Is there was only um, oh, uh, yeah, there were only two levels. The um. Well, there was there was one level um, which was the um, which was divided in half, and every time one player earned a point, it would push it further to one side. And it's it. every point seems to t uh, move it by two uh, pixels. So what I'm probably going to have to do is um, is maybe well, yeah, I probably have to make multiple copies of the map with you know one fully at one side and then one fully at the other side. Uh, that shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Um, Let's have a look at 
the code. So, um, not sure how much of this code I'll be able to use. So, all of the lower code has been imported as um, uh, what uh, just just comments. So I might be able to use this as a reference, but I'll, uh, or some of it as a reference at least, but I'll probably have to do most of it from scratch. Um, let's have a look at the... Yeah, now here's the bit that's unfortunately a bit of a pain, is that... Um, Uh, it's imported everything as uh, 16 by 16 slices so I'm gonna have to reassemble the characters more or less from scratch uh, which, which is alright I just um, uh, may take a little bit of time to uh, put them all together and work out I think they're all um, I think everything was 32 by 32, or at least the uh, the characters were 32 by 32. So um, uh, because of that, we uh, it should be fairly obvious. That, well, it should be that every two, it looks like every pair is connected. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to load the map just to make sure that uh, I can at least see it. That um, It shouldn't be a problem, but when it loads, I'm assuming what we're going to see is basically just the Wild West uh, portion. Uh, yeah, so that's... Um, that's what we expected. Um, I'm assuming that, because um, uh, it's not quite centered, I'm assuming that um, the actual display window is a little bit to the right of that. So one thing at a time. Um, Did we get? <laughs> oh, okay. So it doesn't have a doesn't have a cartridge label. So some Pico Eight games have what's called a cartridge label. So it's like an icon that you see when you've got a PNG file of the game. Uh, this one doesn't. Um, I'm gonna cheat a bit by taking some screenshots of the game, and then using those screenshots to uh, create some of those static screens. Let's go to back to our um, um, go back to my copy of the weight. Okay. 
Okay, is that... Uh... I wonder if there's a official way to take a screenshot of Pico 8. It's not really a problem, it's just, um... Yeah, it's not really a problem if um, if this is the best way to take screenshots. Uh, it just means I'll need to, to trim down the edges. Okay, so the Pico manual says press F7, so I'll give that a try. Alright, F F6. Okay, I'll try um uh, uh, F6. Save screenshot to decimal. Oh excellent, that's um that's exactly what I wanted. Um, now that uh, resolution is too high just because it's uh, the double width, width pixel, so I'm just going to do a percentage resize um, down to 50%. Oh, and um, uh, good to see you, Mixel. And uh, welcome to the stream, Fruitpod. Okay, 192 by 192, that's better. Wait, did that? That's not right. Hang on. Are these double width pixels? No, no, they're not there. Um, so what's three? Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, it should have been obvious that I was supposed to resize it down to. Um, what I'll do is I'll resize it down to one to eight pixels. Uh, pixel resize. Yep, that looks better. You can also export the sprite sheet directly from Pico8 with the command export sprite sheet. I did not know that. I'll have to um, have to have a look at that. Anyway, um, I'll, okay, so I've resized that down to 128, I'll double the size, um, with the pixel resize, so, uh, and then I need to do a, let's bring it down to however many colours it is, 14. Might just rearrange that palette a bit. Uh... No, I'll worry about that later. So, I'll put that in... Um, panels folder, so this will be... Title. Um, I'll just quickly check that... Um, Oh, I need to add a new panel here, so I'm going to call this, um, this is going to be just title. Um, I'll change that to 16 colors, it doesn't need to be 32 colors. And... Um, 
need to center adjust that by, thir oops, by 32 pixels, so that's in the middle. Let's do level, load level, uh, no, display, uh, I'm going to set the panel to title, and then I'll wait for fire button. Uh, I'll just check, um, I'll, I'll put a bit of it, probably don't really need a fade in, fade out, but I'll put one on there anyway. And then let's give this a go. Okay, that works. Um, I'll need to. I will need to change that palette. So I'm just going to make a backup of my image. Oops, that's weird. Um, okay, let's try it. That's better. Um, palette. So I'm going to copy that green, and I'm going to put that to the very end of my palette. And then the first color, I'm going to set that to black so that I can have a black outline. But um, I want to have my green um, cacti back, so I'll paste it into the layer. Down. Oh, no, that was, that was not a good idea because uh, I wanted to keep the palette that I had just changed. So can I just go paste on the selection? Yep, okay, so that's better. And I'll give that another quick test. Okay, so far that's looking all right. Um, I am going to need to work out how I'm going to convert those sprites. Um, so I, um, I'll try the... Um, so Fruipod12 pointed out that you can export the sprite sheet um, straight from Pico, so I'll give that a go. And let's have a look. Is that it? No, that's not it. That's, uh, did it save it to the folder? Yes. Okay, so that's where it went. Oh. Okay, so this is... Um, that's much better because I can... Um, uh, that that's already assembled. Um, oh, of course. Um, actually, already had it. Um, the importer already had a copy of it, but. Um, In any case, um, yeah, it's been such a long time since I've done anything um, uh, Pico related at all. I forgot about um, forgot about that. But anyway, um, so that gives me the um, uh, that gives me all the sprites. So I can individually cut them out. Um, where did two by three? Oh. Sixteen by sixteen. 
Oh yes, okay, because of course this is um this has been double sized so that um, these are all sixteen by sixteen sprites. Uh which is good because um uh I might be able to make everything just sprites, so um the performance should be reasonably good. Well, it should be good because there's only a couple of enemies, uh, only a couple of characters on screen anyway. But um, uh, I do want to be able to have the birds in there as well because that was quite a neat effect just having the birds um, uh, background characters. So let's just get rid of the black and then I will need to individually um, actually I was about to say I could individual I'll need to individually cut and paste each of these but I don't think I need to because um, I can just use my um, uh, sprite sheet parser so I'll get rid of these so what it what it did originally was it sliced up that entire sprite sheet into the um, uh, you know the, the half size the 8 by 8 tiles but because it's all 16 by 16 um, I will need to re-import them so go to images and then uh, yeah, I'll use uh, where is it? Maps, DFX. Now, how many? Um, well, that's that's eight by eight. So if I go eight, and then. Uh, Divide the nearest object into is also eight. See if that works. Okay, let's have a look at that folder. Um, yep, okay, that's looking much better. So we've got the, um, everything's divided up into those individual frames. So let's, um, so everything's going to be the cowboy and I think the other character is a robot, or I'm not sure if it's a robot or if it's a man inside a spacesuit. Um, I guess, uh, or an alien. Let's have a look. Yeah, maybe an alien because it has sort of like white blood. I don't know, but um, in any case, uh, yeah, I'll. Oh, of course, cowboys and aliens, like the movie Cowboys and Aliens. So that's, yeah, so yes, so there's a cowboy character and an alien character. Uh, so let's make um, cowboy idol. And let's put them about there. Uh, I've got to flip it because the character is always facing that way. Let's um, uh, let's make a folder for actors. We'll call them P one cowboy. Um, facing right by default in the right information is cowboy idol. Um, let's paste the tile. 
and uh, platformer control. Let's just um, set all of these to um, pretty standard defaults. I'll need to. I will need to test as I go. Now, as for the map, um, I'll need to make some edits so that I can actually stand on stand on the map. Um, and these are basically oh, well, it's already flagged certain things as being solid, um, but those probably shouldn't be solid. Those should be platforms. Uh, I might need to just quickly check to see if there's anything else that the importer flag is solid that isn't really solid. Uh, there might actually be some things that should be solid that aren't. Hmm. I'm guessing these are meant to be, should be solid. Um, and yes, so we should be able to add our cowboy to the map. So I wonder what the bottom half of the map, I'm, I'm assuming this is some sort of data format that um, yeah, I, I don't actually know what the bottom half of the map is used for, but it doesn't matter. Um, the top half of the map is the only thing that we really need. Uh, so I'm going to put the cowboy right there on the object layer. Um, oh, I'll make some changes here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take the title screen out for now just because I wanna I'm gonna uh, wanna be able to restart the game rapidly uh, as I develop it. Um, I'm gonna need to make it so that this is not a scrolling game, so I'm going to set camera scroll, uh, not scroll speed, the, the camera follow. I'm going to turn all this off so the camera doesn't follow the player. Uh, what else am I going to do? Oh, and I'm going to, going to make it the fastest Amiga with a bunch of fast RAM just so that the game loads as quickly as possible. Oh yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I forgot about um. Oh, I forgot about the shared um that it, it functions as a shared memory area where you can either have a map that's twice as large or you can use um sprites in that area. Oh, okay, that's weird. I wonder why, um, I thought I unticked all of those. It might have been a bug. Um, so far it's looking okay. I need to adjust the collision box, so the, um, so that needs to be larger, so it fit on the, Um, so they won't fall through the platform. Okay, uh, so that works. The um, oh, okay. So some of these um, background tiles, uh, the importer must have um, flagged those as solid. So I'll need to make some changes to that. Uh, 
Um, let's just see. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to go. So uh, I'll just make sure that nothing is set as solid other than. Um, so, yeah, floor and those platforms. Let's try running that again. Uh, thank you for the follow uh, chroma key. Okay, so that's looking um, that's looking a bit better. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna increase the gravity by a fair amount as well as the uh, Yeah, I guess I'm going to need to tweak the, the gravity settings as I go to try and get it um, close enough to the original game. Oh, and the character should walk faster than that as well. Um, I might tone, I might half the amount of gravity. And then triple the movement speed. Uh, the other thing I need to do is, with how the map data is laid out, um, you can't see the entire map on screen at once. I think it's just because there's sort of a buffer to the uh, buffer to the left there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make it I need to make a backup of um, need to make a backup of that so that. Um, I can, um, uh, I can make some changes. Uh, well, so, so my general idea is to make it so that instead of, like I'm assuming what the original game does when, when it goes from day to night or night to day is that it copies a slice of the graphics data into the map data or it, uh, onto the screen data. Um, the Scorpion engine doesn't really support that. Uh, oh, it doesn't support it yet. It's probably a good idea to add in future. But um, what I will do is make it so that um, I will make it uh, so that basically you've got um, different. Oh, that probably needs to be moved down a little bit. Uh, so basically, like I'll just sort of cheat a bit. So I can do, for example, I can copy half of that and then put that as uh, you know the default screen when uh, when the score is tied. Start of the game. I might need to increase Scorpion Engine's um, Y resolution because I think a Pico Eight runs at one twenty eight by as a one twenty eight by one twenty eight screen, and so when it's imported into the Scorpion engine, it doubles the size of those pixels, but it's not 256 high by default. Hopefully it's not going to be a problem if I set the Y resolution to 256, um, but I, I guess I'll see. Um, yeah, I'll just compare. Um, I'm just going to load the, the game again. Okay, so um, I think that should be... Try to move that down a bit. 
about there. Um, oh, whoops, tidy up there. Let's put our, um, our cowboy back on the platform. I might need to review the code, but I'm assuming that the starting positions for the player and the alien are randomly like either the top, the middle, or bottom, or maybe just top and bottom. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's not too bad. That, uh, probably need to fix the background color. Uh, so what? Um, oh, I should have left um, pick away to open. Right there, run it. Okay, so it should be that blue on the left and the, um, what would you call that, maroon on the right? And it looks like I can jump to just, just outside the top of the screen. Oh, and I can face left and right, so we'll need to do the left and right facing um, uh, sprites. Uh, so I need to add a new background layer. Oh, uh, uh, Fupod, you're one of the um, uh, one of the developers of the original game. Well, uh, thanks for um, uh, thanks for coming by the stream. Um, I hope I um, uh, hope you found it interesting so far, and I um, uh, hope I haven't um, haven't butchered it too much. Oh, that's good. Um, so I'm oh, gonna need to add a. Uh, I'll need to add a couple of tiles for the, um, uh, for the background colors. Uh, cause I'm assuming that, um, like it was basically a draw command and pick out that, um, uh, that renders the background, the, the blue and the, um, the maroon color. Oops. Spelled it wrong, didn't I? Um, what did I do wrong? Why didn't that load? Or is it just... Oh, I didn't need... Wait, what did I do? Do it D eight. Doesn't matter. Okay, so let's run that. Um. Okay. 
if I uh, so I'll just make a tile for blue and then um, a tile for that um, uh, maroon color. Uh, yes, yeah, I, um, uh, for some reason I was typing D8 rather than P8 when I was trying to load the cartridge, I have no idea why. Um, but yeah, welcome to the um, stream, uh, uh, Griffin. Uh, so I'm just right from scratch working on a port of a Pico 8 game. Um, so I was able to use the... Um, uh, I was able to use the built-in Scorpion engine Pico 8 importer to bring the graphics across, but there's a fair bit of work to go into actually um, uh, making the game function. Okay, so um, let's um, add in the background for that one, and then I guess the same for here. I want to put what's the red one in. Uh, then I'll do the same up here. So um, Color on that side. Um, of I I do um I do enjoy playing Pico Eight games. I've never actually um I've never actually made a Pico Eight game, but um I'm always really interested in seeing what. Uh, people in the community come up with um, there's a guy called um, Tom Mulgrew who who's a New Zealander and he does a lot of really cool um, 3d um, 3D games in uh, Pico 8 that I find really interesting. Like, um, uh, there was one that was basically a hybrid of Power Drift and Stunt Car Racer that was really cool. Um, so yeah, I, uh, yeah, long story short, I really do, I do enjoy playing a few Pico 8 games. I've never actually made one myself, but I figured. Because the format, the format is really, really simple. Um, you, it, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't that difficult to add an importer for the graphics data. Um, so I thought that would be a cool little thing for, um, uh, you know, just so that um, any particularly interesting um, uh, pick away games we could bring them across. Um, it happened that. Um, the team were developing a Pico game for this game jam, so um, I thought it'd be really cool to try out the game, see um, see if we can get it um, converted. Okay, so that, um, oh, gravity's still a little bit high. I think it's feeling almost right. It's just gravity's just a little bit too high still. So I might put it to 0 0.2. Um, I think I'll also reduce the 
collision box uh, mostly so that um, uh, so that like we can we can jump uh, so we don't hit the top of the um, top of the level. I think I need to reduce it more actually. Uh, I'm probably not going to use the collision box for the for the gunshots. I might use um, like basically just work out you know when you go to fire what height the other player is at. Oh, actually, uh, maybe I should. Um, no, what what I should have done is just make it so that it doesn't collide when it's jumping up. So that way, should be able to jump partly out of the top of the screen without um, uh, without bouncing off. Okay, well, I think, um, something I keep meaning to add to the engine and haven't done yet is, um, because I've got the gravity and the, the full speed in, you can, um, you can use algebra to work out how, how many pixels that's going to jump, but. I really should have had a field in here which says this is how many pixels it's going to jump, and then you can edit it, and that would change the gravity. Um, I might make gravity just slightly higher, and then I'll get to work on the. Uh, I'll get all the animations in for the cowboy. I'll start animations for the um, for the alien. Oh. No, that's just not quite enough. Okay, I'll put it back how it was. That was how I had it to do. Um, and I should rename that to Cowboy Idol. Uh, uh, because the Cowboy does have a uh, left and right facing... Um, well, yeah, cowboy can look left and right. So let's, let's flip. Um, what other animations, uh, frames of animation? So, it looks like we've got a, well, we've got a whole shooting system, uh, shooting system. Oh, that looks like, I'm guessing that's a jump and that's the fall. And then there's a walk frame. Um, so the uh, uh, Pico 8 resolution is 128 by 128. Uh, and so the tiles are 8 by 8. That doesn't work well for Scorpion, of course, but since it's exactly half of a typical scorpion resolution and half of the scorpion tile size all the importer does is it really just doubles um doubles the number of pixels on each axis um, it does mean that um like because the amiga resolution is double on both axes to the pico 8 that it's a little it looks a little smoother because uh, your characters can move basically half a pixel compared to um, the Pico 8. But I, I think it's... I, 
Um, well, at least I hope it's not um, it's not going to bother anyone too much that it um, ever so slightly screw the. Uh, actually, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna place cowboy down right on the line. Um, actually, cowboy out of wrong. Ah, oh, uh, that's idle right, idle left. Just adjust the collision box. Um, I'm gonna make a copy of um, call this cowboy walk right. Oh, of course, the other thing I mentioned is um, the pick away to sixteen colors. And because of that, I import the palette twice, so we can use the bottom half for bobs, and then, you know, just for that extra bit of performance, we can use the top half for um, hardware sprites. I'm not sure if I need to use hardware sprites on this one, but I may do, just, or I might use them for, like, those, um, like, the little birds um, in the scene. Anyway, um, uh, I need to go walk and then that one looks like a walk frame. Um, oh, I should move that back to slightly, just play that. Yeah, I think that will do. Um, I can always change the uh, walk speed later, the animation speed later, if it um, doesn't quite fit, or if it looks too fast or too slow. Uh, now I'll need to um, flip that, um, both of them. Okay, so we've got our uh, walk cycles in, so I'll put those in, then I might give it a real quick test. Did I not connect the right? Ah, oh. no, that was silly of me. I should have put a walk left. So walk right, walk left. Okay, so I need. Uh, there's a few more I need to do, so um, I'm going to go uh, cowboy jump left. Um, Oh, now what was that one for? It's leaning. Might need to review the game again. Um, just, so, just so I get a sense of what those, um, those ones are used for. Oh, okay, so it's part of the walk cycle.
Okay, yep. So I'm um so I assumed that the walk cycle used the idle frame, it doesn't, it uses these two um uh left and right ones. And then yep, the jump is just legs in when it's going up and legs out when it's going down, so that'd be easy enough. So, um, I'm going to delete that um, information. Um, need to fix uh, this one. So, I think that's the second walk frame. Maybe. That frame. Oh. 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 I think I'm, I've clicked edit rather than delete. Okay, I think that's correct. Um, I want to do the same thing here. So. Um, Gets that one. Um, I'll just delete the idle frame. Yeah, I think that's better. So I need cowboy jump L. Um, I think it was this one with the legs in. Um, a cop and a cowboy jump R. And I will X flip that. Um, now I need I'll just create a new animation for. Just about to put that in the wrong place. I think that one was the full one. I'll just compare with. Yep. Okay, uh, cowboy full right. that, bring that across, looks about right, okay so I just need to hook those up to our actor, uh, so jump right, full right, uh, full left, jump left, just double check those, Jump right, walk right, full right, full left, walk left, jump left. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that was 
Yeah, I was about to say that was weird, but I know exactly why uh, why it's doing that. Um, just because it is out of bounds. Okay, so I'm going to make, uh, I'll need to make some tweaks to the map. Um, I will set that back as block, but I'll make it so that there's padding around uh, around the map area. Now, um, yeah, so I don't need um, I don't need any of the sprite data at the bottom because that's um, that's all been imported elsewhere. So I can just oops, I can just get rid of that. Okay, oh, it was um, uh, it was uh, good to see you on um, stream, Griffin, and um, yep, uh, take care as well. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna copy those, and I'll place them right down the bottom as backups. Oh, and I need to, need to copy the background layer as well. Um, let's, um, I'm going to get rid of the whole background and then, um, Oh, in fact, I'll get rid of, um, yeah, I'll get rid of that, and then I'm going to move this down so that there's a one tile gap. Move it down so there's a one tile gap just around it, so about, oh, um, Okay, so I'll put it like that. And I'll need to put the background back, so I'll grab my background, uh, background tiles. Let's paste that there, and then the same for that. Oh, I'm uh, really uh, glad to hear that, Maxwell. Um, and uh, really glad that you've been coming to so many streams. Okay, so I'll need to make a change to my... Um, I'm going to set the camera exactly. It's 16 by 16. Oh, and I, I guess I may want to put some solid blocks on either side because uh, even though I don't want it to block when it's jumping outside the ceiling. Yep, okay, so that's that's working better. Oh, um, I should have added more of a gap, I think. No, okay, so I'll, I'll move it again. Uh, this time I'll move it down further. But it doesn't actually need to be that far to the left. So I'll move it down to there and then same for the background. Um, let's, uh, let's move the, the cowboy down to, uh, to there. Uh, 
and then I'll give it a, I'll give it another try. But I think things are looking pretty good for um, a starting point. Oh, uh, of course, I forgot to move the camera. So the camera X should be zero, but the camera Y should be 32. So we move it down further. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. And um, except for the shooting and the blocking animations, the cowboy has all of. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna need to. Uh, I'm gonna need to add some solid blocks around the uh, the level because I don't want um, the character to just fall off. So. Oh, now that looks like a tile that's not actually, I assume this tile isn't being used for anything? At least I can't remember seeing that tile in the game, so I'm just going to flag that one as solid. And then I'm just going to use that for um, putting it um, off screen. Uh, and I will move... Um, I will move it over again and then add the tiles on both sides so I should be able to um, uh, where are we? Okay, so put that on the map or the background. I'll put that on the background layer. So we won't won't actually be able to see these in game, but they will um, at least stop the player from walking off the edge. Um, and then that means I should be able to place copies of the map at uh, multiples of 18. Ah, because I forgot again, um, camera. Okay, now that's looking, um, that is fit that feels pretty solid um i don't know if it's exactly perfectly like our um the movement in the original game is but i think it will do for now uh, i guess gonna always tweak it um so i am going to take a real quick break and then i'm going to get to work on adding the alien into the level um so
Did you want one? Okay, I'm back. Um, and yeah, it's it's just absolutely stunning. Um, I um, I got the like when I announced that I had a Pico Eight importer in the Scorpion engine. I got this random comment on um, uh, Twitter, basically saying, you know, what's the point of this if this you know can't do a full conversion? So I sort of you know, explain that, um, you know, it, I mean, it's not really meant to do a full conversion. It is just meant to sort of get the ball rolling on, um, it, like, it, it does a partial import so that you can you know, manually finish off the import. And it turns out the guy that asked the question was um, one of the absolute legends of, um, uh, you know, Pico development because he had done... Um, uh, he'd done quite a few of um, like the three D remakes of um, well remakes of the Pico of you know big commercial games. Yeah, I, th I think the one that impressed me the most was the um, the Doom one. Just um, yeah, really incredible that they could get a game that you know such in such a limited virtual um, such a limited fantasy console being able to have a full first person shooter. I'd love to be able to work out how to do first person shooters in Scorpion, but I think it's I think it's just not possible yet. Okay, Alien Idol Rot. Why 
I haven't seen that. Bubble something. Is that like a? Is that a sequel to like um, Bubble Bobble? Oh, I might have to have a look at that. Um. I'm definitely keen for more um uh to do more conversions in future. One I wouldn't mind doing is um the Alex Kid port. Um Well it was quite amazing how they managed to pull that off because um like they realized that uh the maps are fairly repetitive uh so that um uh so instead of you know uh running out of space they're able to fit the entire alex kid game oh well that is um uh that's pretty good cool. i'll put that on the screen in just a sec Um, why isn't that pasting in? Ah, oh, of course, because uh, I'm not even on. The... So I, yeah, I can normally copy and paste links between my PC and my Mac, but we're not. It's not on the same um, network at the moment. Um, I'll see if I can find Bubble Symphony. Um, go eight. Oh, yeah, that's it there. Yeah, that is really cool. Is this one you can actually play, or is this sort of like um, just a graphical mock-up? Oh, okay, it says, um, it says concept. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure how practical that would be in... Um, uh, you know, because you've got so, um, the amount of lure that you can ride is quite limited. Um, it'd probably be quite difficult to pull that off in Scorpion as well because of things like, um, you know, I wouldn't really have support for something where, like, you know, wave comes up and fills the whole screen. Anyway, where was I? Uh, so I've got Alien Idol right. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I mean, now, uh, just sort of an open question about... <clears throat> So this game is a two-button game, and the reason for having two buttons is because um, well, because you can shoot, but also because you can um, deflect. Uh, and it would be possible to have to make it two button here as well, but I think 
uh, I may make it one button and then like you know you maybe hold away you push the button you hold away from the other player to do um, or to do the parry or do the deflect uh, the reason for that is is just because um, one button joysticks are the most common on Amiga. And let's find the two walking frames. I think it's that one and this one. Ah, uh, wait, no, maybe that. What? I don't know. Oh, maybe it's all three if it's. Uh. No, I'll just use um, the walking frames where the white leg is forward. Uh, frame. Okay, so I think that looks okay for the walk cycles. Um, alien, uh, let's <clears throat> alien jump. that one. Okay, let's uh, jump right. Flip that. And then I guess it's I've only got the two full frames to do. Was it this? Yeah, that looks like the full frame.
Let's make a copy of this. I'm going to call this P2 Alien. And um, I'm going to set this player 2. Jump right. Walk right. Full right. Full left. Uh, walk left and jump left. And we've got the on the map. Oh, those are the walk frames. I wonder what. Okay, so it didn't. Um... All right, so there's four. There wasn't two. I must have just missed the. Um... Uh, just because of the order, it pulled them in. Wait. Um... So I've got that connector. Okay, I might as well fix, um, you know, get the walk cycle correct. So um, I'll just double check that tile set. Five and then this. Ah, oh, no, I'm missing one near the top, so that will be uh, two hundred three. Yep. Okay, so that's the correct walk cycle. Two, two, three, four, five. Um. lined up there. Okay, that's a walk cycle for the alien fix, so I just need to do the walk cycle for the cowboy. So that's missing the first two frames. Um, I've had similar thoughts myself about um, dungeon crawlers. I've never actually gone so far as to start um, 
start investigating it. Um, I mean, you definitely wouldn't be able to have a 50 frame a second game if you're replacing every tile, every frame. But having said that, um, you know, you don't need 50 frames a second. You could probably do with um, 10 frames a second or even less. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess the general idea is for each variant of the maze, you would have it as a different part of the map. Um, and then for the monsters, you would just, um, I guess you would either assemble them out of blocks or you would make them act as Would be a very cool demo to get working if um, uh, if anyone was to ever try it. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay, that walk cycle seems to be better. Um, oh, and I'll just set that to one. Oh, um, okay, so this is something I'll need to fix, because I don't think you could fall down through tiles, fall down through, um, see, so there was a duck left and a duck right animation, I think. Oh, and do I have, um, what's player two's controls set up as? Numeric keypad, uh, keypad, so that's, uh, yep, so the alien seems to be working, that's no problem. Yeah, I think um, I think that's working pretty well. Um, just need to make some tweaks to those platforms so that you can't fall through them like that. So all we need to do is we need to set uh, as the platform and is solid. Um, I'll double check that, but I should be able to jump jump onto them from underneath but I shouldn't be able to fall through them by pushing down anymore. I can't push down but I can, um, can jump back onto them. Uh, let's have a look at the ducking tiles. Uh, single frame. Okay. 
Okay, and I'll need to make a different actor for the ducking state. So let's add, um, let's add those sprites to begin with. one is the ducking frame that one four is zero zero okay let's um Um, might as well do the alien duck while I'm at it. Oh, why did I? No, I didn't need to copy it. It's just, um, uh, where is the alien duck? There we go. Now I'll I'll need to play the game again, um, just to double check the ducking mechanics. Okay, so you can turn around while you duck. Oh, I forgot about the birds, so I'll have to put them in one way or another. I think I've got the walk speed about right, but the jump speed feels a bit nippier, I think, in the. Uh, now, I, I, uh, just check. That is quite a cool animation. Um, I might have some problems if I try to make a uh, an object that long, um, but instead of a full screen shot, I could maybe just make it as a bullet that goes um, like really. Like, well, quite wide as well as being noticeably fast. The shake effect's quite nice as well. Um, so, um, maybe I should look at, um, adding that or adding something like that. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I can't move while I'm ducked, but I can change direction. If I try to shoot, then it immediately stands up, so I can't shoot in the duck position. Uh, the parry uh, move... Um, oh, that's interesting. So, so if, I, if I shoot, then it immediately comes to a stop, but if I do a parry, it slides to a stop. Oh, and there is some 
acceleration and deceleration there so it should uh, should add that to the scorpion port as well and I oh, and I can't can't block while I'm ducking I can only block while I'm standing um, just um, Alright, um, well that's all I needed to see, was just how ducking, how it functioned. So I'm going to make a new actor called P1 Cowboy Duck. Uh, before I go any further, um, I don't think I need, uh, so these are the uh so these are the scripts that were ported from lower um i can't really make any use of them at the moment but i may still need them later as a reference so i'll just move them to a different folder and then uh what am i doing next um i need to have um i will need to make some code for handling when the uh, player can duck. Actually, I forgot to check if the player can can the player duck while they're moving. Uh, they can, it just goes to an immediate stop. They don't uh, slide or anything, so that's alright. Um, so, uh, player cowboy duck is going to be uh, control platform again. It's only going to have duck R and duck left. Um, on, uh, probably doesn't really matter, but I'll copy the... Um, uh, I copy all those settings across. I oh, accept. Speed left is zero. Speed right is zero. Uh, and I'll need to move that down there. And I'll make the collision box a lot smaller. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter for that because I'm assuming there's simply no way to hit a ducking. Um, Uh, duck and Cowboy. Uh, let's see that as player one. And I'll have to add some custom code. So I will um, code folder. Um, P1 Cowboy stand. So I just need to check play. Uh, I need to do condition. Uh, player is on platform, and if that yeah is not or not equals to zero, um, in condition, then I need to do. Um, Control Control one Y is greater than zero, so they need to be pushing. Need to be pushing down, so that's correct, I think. Um, then I need to say, well, if that happens, then uh, we can change to the duck state. And I will set that as um, I want to stand handler. So I'm going to need a 
uh, copy of that, which is P1 Cowboy Duck. Um, so I don't need I don't need to bother with the check if they're on the platform because they are going to be in the platform if they're ducked. And then I'm just going to say, well, if the control Y is less than or equal to zero, so if the if they're either pushing up or they are just leaving the joystick in idle, then we want to change it back to play one cowboy. And then, um, so that was a stand handler. I'll make that the duck handler. Okay, yep, that seems to work exactly like the um, uh, like it does on the other games. So I can just sort of duck anywhere, look whatever direction. That's, um, yeah, I think that's working all right. Um, so I need to do the same with the... Uh, Need to let the alien duck. So, um, I'll just make a copy of that actor P two alien duck. Um, and duck right and duck left. Um, copy of my code block, so P1 alien, ah, uh, sorry, P, P2 alien duck handler. And that needs to be control 2y is less than or equal to zero, then change player to. Uh, P2 alien. Uh, copy the other one. P2 alien stand handler. Um, I hope this is all making sense and that it's interesting. If you've got any questions, just um, uh, just say so in the chat, and I'll. Um, uh, try to answer it best I can. Oh, uh, that should be P2 alien duck. Alien duck. Um, so that should be P2 alien duck handler and then uh, P1. Um, Stand handler. Oh, uh, okay, um, I should change my logic here because um, I should use actor rather than player because there are two players on the screen that could be confusing it, but if I say actor then it's unambiguous that um, uh, the code is referring to the um, uh, the actual actor. Um, I 
probably should change that to actors on platform as well. Okay, I hope it's going to work this time. It should be a fairly simple thing to add. Okay, um, so it's working for the cowboy. The alien it's working on, except now this is something I can't explain. Um, I can make the cowboy turn around while ducking, but I can't do the same to the alien. I can't explain that. I'm just going to try swapping the joystick ports. No, okay, so that is, oh, is it because, oh, okay, so that should have been set to player two. Maybe that's why the duck didn't work correctly either. It's because, um, uh, yeah, yeah, may, yeah, maybe the duck didn't work because the ducking object was set to player one rather than player two. Okay, that one's working, and that one's working. Okay, so movement is more or less 100% done. Um, so I'm going to need to work on the, the deflections and the gunshots. Might just play the game one more time just to get more of a sense of the timings. Um. So it seems to take about half a second for each of the three states. Uh, if I don't get it right first time, it's easy enough to, to tweak it.
A uh, random question. Does anyone know if um, Pico games can be played online? Like online multiplayer? Okay, let's um Yeah, I think the timing's about right. Uh so let's make a cowboy shoot left. Um, I'll connect that to the cowboy shoot right, cowboy shoot left. Okay, that looks about right. Um, of course, it's not actually killing the alien. Um, but, oh, and, um, I need to make prevent move.
Okay, so I can't move. As soon as I go to move, or as soon as I go to shoot. Oh, well that was... That's weird, why... Oh, it's just because I wasn't quite jumping high enough. Might reduce the gravity just a little bit more. Um, just so that when they jump up onto the platforms, it's um, uh, jumps a little bit higher than the platforms. Okay, um, that seems to be working, but I think I'm going to do some custom shooting logic because I want it to be a one-button game, but I also want it to have a regular shoot as well as a um, as well as the deflect or the um, uh, the parry. So I'll probably make it that when you release the fire button, it then does the attack. But depending on whether the joystick is idle or forward, that will do a shoot. But if you're doing it backwards, then it will do the parry. Just try, um, oops, what is the shoot? Okay, so that's the alien shoot button. If I parry, then okay, so, um, so the parry time is very precise, so. It, um, if you parry before they shoot, then um, it's not going to work. Uh, but if you, if you parry just after the other one is aimed, then that will deflect the shot. So let's add cowboy parry uh, left. Uh, let's copy that. Um, cowboy parry right. Parry left, parry right. Uh, 
Oh, and that should be about half a second, so I'll put that as 25 frames. 25 frames. Uh, then I'm going to need to Um, okay, I've already removed the attack animation, so I need to add some logic to here so that um, let's add um, P1 button down. And I'll make it that if we're in mid-air for some reason, then the button one down state, we set that to nothing. Set, we'll set that to false. Um, so if player one pushes down, then we um, we don't want to do anything further. So I'll just go um, return. Then I need another condition, which is if. Um, Control, control one fire. It's not equal to zero. Oh, uh, actually, no. I want to check if um, button down. So if they're not holding the button down, then um, I'm just gonna go. Um, set that to control one fire. So that means on the next frame, it will, um, if I'm holding down fire, I can do the logic differently. So I'm going to add an else in here, and then I'm going to, uh, well, I have to add another condition in here, which is if um, if Control one fire equals zero. I'll just make a note so it's saying that lifted fire button. Then we want to do the shoot. So I'm just going to go player. Uh, just to test with, I'm just going to go player animation. Um, cowboy. Cowboy shoot right. Actually, that should be, again, that should be actor. Oh, and I need to set um, P1 button down is false. I'll need to do some checking for which direction they're in but hopefully that should work for just the test just to make sure that um, we can shoot in oh, just that we can shoot by lifting the button rather than on button down note that didn't quite work as expected. Oh, 
อวัยแห่งโอเค it's almost working um I must have just made a mistake somewhere here Okay, so the problem is, as soon as I put my finger down on the button, it fires. Um, but when I lift my finger off the button, I think I've been streaming too long. Um, I might have to um, call it a night soon. But. There's something wrong with my logic here. So if I want button down at zero, then you see it button down at control fire. Otherwise, on the next frame. Oh, um, so I, know, I think I might know what it is. Um, because there's two states for button down. So there's, there's a different variable for if it's... Um, Uh, sorry, there's a there's a different control one fire has different values for whether you've just pushed the button or whether you've held it down. So that's what could be confusing it. So let's change that to an in. Uh, I'm just going to go if uh, if control one fire equals and then I've got yeah if it equals button down rather than button hit then uh, I want to set set variable p1 button down set that to true Oh, no, that was silly of me. Um, I forgot to... I thought I removed the shoot animations from the Cowboys attack animations, I guess, uh, but because I forgot to do that, um, everything I did just then was probably completely unnecessary. It's all right. I can just... I'll set it back the way it was, just for the uh, sake of simplicity. So set player one... Um, P1 button down just to equal whatever is in control one. Hit. Control one fire. Okay, so that's working as expected.
it um It plays the animation. Uh, oh, it only plays the animation when I've lifted fire. Um, but I want to add the um, uh, special um, uh, the parry. So I'll add a condition in here. Um, so it's another another nested if statement, and I'm just gonna go um, if control one x is greater than or equal to zero. So if it's if the control is either in the idle position or if the player is holding it to the right, then it'll play the cowboy shoot. Uh, otherwise, um, I'm going to play the um, cowboy. Harry. And actually, I should make a change to. I think the Perry animation. Um, oh, never mind. Uh, I was just thinking because you can't. There's a gap between the time that you can parry. And so I might just need to do a timer just to make sure that it. Um, uh, so you, you can't just block constantly, uh, otherwise um, the other player will never, never be able to hit them. Oops. Okay, so if I block, okay, so if I block, it takes about two seconds before I'm allowed to block again. Uh, what about if I fire? No, I can basically fire in a loop, but I need to have some special condition in for. Uh, making it so that I can only block um, like once every two seconds or so. Okay, this should be easy enough to do. Um, shoot R on actor, parry. Um, well, I'll give that a go as is. Okay, so let's have a look. So if I, yep, uh, I can still shoot. Uh, can I block? Oh. Ah, oh. okay, so there's a problem I hadn't thought of is um, yep, so I can indeed parry, but the problem is I shouldn't be able to move when I'm, um, holding on fire 
So I may just need to do a special version of the idle animation uh, just to make sure that it, um, that I can't move while... Or how else can I handle it? I suppose I could change it to a special... I could change it to a special cowboy type which can't move. And then I could put the logic for the um, um, whether I'm shooting or parrying. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So um, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to call this P1 Cowboy Deck. Um, and then I don't even really, I don't even really need that anymore. I don't need my variable. I can actually simplify this a fair bit. So I can go, um, If play one button down, then oh, if uh, I can just go if control one fire, then actor or yeah actor set avoid oh attack. I need I need to take the speed down. Oh. <clears throat> and I'll change the type to CPU so that uh, we can't turn around while we're in the attack state. Uh, no, that should be CPU platform, uh, just in case gravity is needed. So I'll set to P1 Cowboy Attack. Um, I'm going to make a copy of this P1 Cowboy Attack. And load. So that means um, uh, code is a little bit simpler, uh, can be a little bit simpler, because uh, I can basically get rid of most of these lines. That should, oh, that should be control one fire not equal to zero, then change that to cowboy attack. Um, the cowboy attack handler, then I don't need to worry about the duck. Um, get rid of most of that. All I need to check is if the um, if we've listed, lifted the fire button, um, so we play the shoot, and then I will want to set the actor type back to being P1 Cowboy. Oh, and one thing I forgot to do was I need to change that to the attack handler.
Um, okay, so the parry needs to be prevent move. Uh, it doesn't feel natural because I've got to push the button first, then hold left, and then lift the button while holding left. So um, I might review my logic a bit. So um, I'll just change it to... So let's have a look. Um, Do a return. Um, I'll just say if it is less than zero, then um, Okay, I'll see how that feels. Okay, so there's still some... Um, There are some glitches that um, I can interrupt what I was doing. Hmm, something fairly simple, but I'm just um, well. This should be fairly simple, but just, um, I need to get it. Um, need to work out what I'm doing wrong, or a better way to handle it. Okay, um, what I will do um, I'm going to change that to set variable. And I'm going to use var1. So that's 
variable just for that actor. I'm just going to say um, true. Um, and I'm going to do the same here, set to true. Um, I will duplicate that. Um, just make a new condition just to say if um, actor var1 equals true, 